This week's video is sponsored by Parked Pro filming the Canadian Disc Golf Tour. We will leave a link down in the description where you can get more information on Parked Pro and the Canadian Disc Golf Tour. What's up locals? My name is Ryan and this is Local Disc Golf. So today we are looking at the Hex. Uh, definitely a mid-range that I have uh, fallen in love with. It's uh, just such a good and dependable disc and with MVP plastic, you know you're gonna get a variety of plastic choices and with that comes usually a variety of flight characteristics while keeping the same feel in your hand, which is uh, why over the last, I don't know, six months or so, eight months, I've been kind of collecting hexes with different plastics. So today we're gonna find out what the heck's the difference. So I first got an MVP Glow Hex at the Space Race last year. Uh, I can leave a link to that video up here. Managed to get an ace with it, like the first round I played with it at the event. So instantly was like, I probably should bag this disc. I think I like it. And um, after that one, uh, shout out to our friends over at JK Discs. They got us a Neutron Hex uh, to have a look at as well. And those were my first two. And what was nice about these two is they fly very different from each other. They feel identical in the hand, but the glow is so much more stable. So I had this really nice kind of variation between the two. The other thing that I love about the Hex is it feels a lot like a reactor. And in the glow plastic, the glow reactor is quite a bit more stable than the glow Hex. So now all of a sudden I've got three different uh, discs that actually feel the same, but have quite different flight characteristics. So uh, that was sort of what first drew me here. Uh, moving forward, um, at the end of last year, I managed to grab a Fission Hex, uh, also from JK Discs, and I've uh, been loving this one. It's quite a light one, 159 this one here. So glidey, get nice gentle turnover lines out of it, great distance, really a big fan of the Fission Hex. And uh, these were the three actually just right here as we start uh, that I was bagging. So I had the Fission Hex, it's kind of like a turnover. Neutron was fairly straight, sometimes a little bit of a flip up. And my Glow Hex, which was like kind of my dependably stable Hex, great for a headwind shot. Uh, then we fast forward to this year and the OTB release gave us two uh, in the first round. It gave us the Soft Neutron Hex and the Prism Plasma Hex. And the last one that just came out a couple weeks ago was the Proton Hex. So in theory now with six different plastics, uh, I expected to see some different flights here. Now what I initially expected is not what I learned. So let's stop for a moment. We'll take a quick look at the uh, flights here of these discs. Uh, but ultimately, you know, just getting back to feel really quickly here. I just love the way this felt in the hand. I don't want to call it, it doesn't feel like a putter, but it's got a bit of a, like a chunkier edge to it. Uh, you know, it almost feels uh, maybe it's just the overmold technology, and I've, I've mentioned this before in a video where I was a big fan of the Pathfinder for a long time. And truthfully, I still love the Pathfinder, um, but I kind of ditched the Pathfinder for the Hex because I just felt like, you know, between the variety of plastics with flight characteristics and the reactor, I was getting this like nice sort of similar feel in hand. The Pathfinder feels more like I'm heading towards, it's a five speed that feels more like a six speed. And I would say the Hex is a five speed that feels probably more like a four speed, where the rim starts to feel like, you know, just a little bit thicker, not quite putter, but it's just got that feel to it. But if I was gonna go from most stable to least stable, I would have started with my Glow Hex, obviously. And before having thrown them, I would have gone right next to the Proton Hex. I would have said Glow, likely then Proton maybe then Prism Plasma, um, and then I probably would have said Neutron, then Soft Neutron as the second least stable, and lastly, the Fission. Am I holding these the right way? Maybe. What I discovered was actually quite different. Let's take a look at the flights here, and um, I have actually ordered these flights, in my opinion, from least stable to most stable. Here we go. So we'll start with the fission. That was, that one held true. All right. So nice sort of flat to maybe gentle Annie line there. And you can see it just held, did come out of it barely at the end. 
Next one here, again, probably even a little bit more of an ante line there. And that one really held that nice little turnover line with just a little fade out at the end. This last one on a big hyzer, sorry, my follow flight uh, information must not have been entered correctly because that really zipped. So next one up is the Neutron. Again, sort of a gentle turnover line, but again, more, more fade out at the end. This one has a bit of a low laser line and again, very flat, very straight on that one with my Neutron. Last one here on a bit of a hyzer line and this one here. Uh, kind of a dependable hyzer line again with a nice with a nice strong hyzer. Next one up is the Proton. This surprised me. This was not as stable as I expected. I could put this on a flat to slight ante release and it really held that line. And it just came out barely at the end there. Next up, Prism Plasma. Again, little turnover line there and I know it comes out of the frame but you'll see it just dips back at the end there. Next, Soft Neutron. I did not expect this. Pretty flat release and quite a dependable fade at the end there. Again, on this one here, pretty flat. And again, I apologize, it came out of the frame. It just dips back in at the end there because it was, again, quite stable. And last up is my Glow. For some reason, I had a couple of issues with my follow flights here. I mean, they're giving you the general idea, but there's a few spots I can see where the disc is not following quite perfectly. I'll have to fix that. Apologies for that. Anyway, you can see the glow basically fading dependably out of the flight every single time. And that wraps up the flight. So very interesting stuff. It's not what I expected. I do remember seeing a vlog with Simon Lazat not that long ago where he said he was surprised to see that the soft Neutron was flying more stable than his Neutron. I, I can't even remember which disc it was, but he just said he thought that the soft Neutron would have been less stable, but in fact, he, his discovery was more stable. And I can agree more uh, from my experiences. It was not at all what I expected. You could almost flip soft Neutron and Proton in their spots there. So. Uh, wrapping this one up, uh, definitely leave a comment down below if you were surprised with that outcome. Thanks as always for watching. Uh, we'll leave a link to our next video up here. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. This is local. We are local. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm sticking with this title.